One of the fundamental discoveries of relativity is that, contrary to what our senses tell us, we do not live in a three-dimensional space, but in a space-time that has four dimensions. Indeed, time must be considered as a fourth dimension in addition to the well-known three-dimensional space, making it four-dimensional in all. However, our senses cannot perceive more than three dimensions. It is therefore very difficult to visualize a fourth dimension. To understand the concept of space-time, we must therefore reduce the number of dimensions involved. These two points move along a single dimension, that being a line. They hit each other and bounce. Let's add time as a second dimension. Now here's the same collision in space-time. Let's slide an opaque cover with a slit in it into this figure. What do you see in the slit? Two points bouncing off one another, the exact same movement as before. Therefore, the slit represents what we perceive through our senses, while its movement corresponds to the passage of time. Let's do it again. Here's the complete space-time, but our senses perceive only what appears in the slit at a given moment. The slit represents the present, which moves through space-time, which moves with time. Here's another example, a ball bouncing between two walls. Then it's space-time. Now an inflating object that finally explodes. And it's space-time. Yet another example, a caterpillar moving by elongating and contracting its body, followed by its space-time. Let's repeat the basic point. What is perceptible by the senses is what appears in the slit at a given moment. When we remove the slit and see the full figure, we place ourselves in the position of a sort of God who lives outside of time and outside of space. We see all the moments at the same time. The start here, when the object was small, a bit later when it has grown, and later still when it exploded. We cannot normally perceive this figure in full. We see only a slice of it that slides with the passage of time. We must, therefore, distinguish the one-dimensional space, which is perceptible by the senses, and the two-dimensional space-time, which is beyond the senses. We can do the same thing again with an extra dimension, that is, with objects having two spatial dimensions. Their space-time will then be three-dimensional. For instance, here is a disk and a square moving on a plane. The disk describes a circular motion, while the square rotates on itself. Here is the three-dimensional space-time corresponding to this situation. The moving slit in the preceding figures is now replaced by a plane in motion. In moving, it replicates on its surface the movement of the disk and of the square. And what now corresponds to the sensory world is what appears on the plane. Here are different moments, now, later, later still. Again, to be able to observe this figure as a whole, one must be a kind of God living outside of time and space, since all instants are perceived simultaneously. Let's look at a final example, a dancer in motion, then the corresponding version in the space-time. We observe the flow of the dancer through space-time. In our examples, we can see the whole space-time because we have reduced the number of dimensions. In the real world, our objects have three spatial dimensions and space-time has four dimensions, which is impossible to draw, of course. But it's exactly the same idea. We are evolving through a space-time which we perceive only in temporal cross-cuts from moment to moment. At every moment, we only perceive a three-dimensional cross-cut of the four-dimensional reality.